Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this embroidered doormat which I'm making for my doll's house kitchen. Coming up next is a list of what you'll need and then we'll get started. For this project I'm going to be using an 18 count interlock canvas and that means there are 18 holes across the inch. You might also see it listed as 18 HPI canvas and I'm using a size 22 tapestry needle. I'm using Appleton's Cruel Wool and I've just got a couple of shades here and I'll put the shade numbers up on the screen for you there. I just want a really sort of simple coir doormat. I think that's how you say it, coir. But they do actually do a whole range of colours. I've got one of their um, shade cards here and you can just see how many colours are available. So if you wanted to do something with a bit of a pattern, maybe leaves or flowers or something like that, then you could do that. There's some wonderful colours to choose from on there. I've got here a six inch embroidery hoop or embroidery frame. You'll need a ruler, and a pencil for marking up the canvas and a pair of scissors. Begin by cutting a piece of canvas big enough to fit over your frame and you can get frames a lot smaller than this and as the doormat's going to be about 76 millimeters or three inches by an inch and a half, 38 millimeters, you could use a smaller one. But I'm using this one because I feel quite comfortable using this one. So just cut the canvas and then fit that onto your frame. It's quite a thick canvas so it can be quite tricky to get on. So just sort of work your way round folding the canvas as you go holding it backwards on itself and then tighten your hoop and you want the fabric to be as tight as you can get it so that we get a nice square rug. Tighten that up and then pull it through a bit more if you can. I'm sure most of you have done um, tapestry before so you know all this but I'll just go through it in case there are any beginners watching and then in that little sort of tightening screw part you have actually got a slot for a flathead screwdriver so you can tighten it up even more using your smallest screwdriver like that nice and tight I'm now actually going to mark up the canvas for the size of the rug I want. Now I'm doing mine 76 millimetres by 38 millimetres and that's three inches by one and a half inches. So that would be about a standard size for a doormat. But if you want to do yours smaller or bigger, you can. Maybe you want to use this process for a bath mat or something like that, so you could do it a little bit bigger. But begin by go in along one of the lines in the canvas, so follow the lines of the canvas and you want to make sure you're sort of in the centre of your ring as well. So I'll move over a little bit there and then just draw along the canvas like that to there. And then turn and do your other measurement. I want to go to about there. Same along the other side. So I'm coming along this line here. And then join those up. Now I'm not quite in the centre there, but I've got enough room on either side for my border when we finish off. 
Now I'm doing a very simple pattern on my rug and I'm just going to have one line of my coordinating coloured wool around the outside edge. So I'm actually going to draw that line on here as well and I'm going to start with that colour and then it's just a case of filling in the second colour which is quite enjoyable. But if you're doing a counted um, cross stitch or embroidery pattern then you can skip this stage and you'll obviously just want to centralise your pattern so find your centre and maybe make a little mark or a little cross and that's where you'll start with your pattern. But for my doormat I'm just going to do the lighter coloured line about two squares away from the edge. So I'll count two squares from each edge and then I'll do the line like that. So one, two, so that will come to there. And I'll go all the way along like that. That's sort of on half a square there, so I'll carry the line over a little bit and then up there. Like that, so that will come out to there. Just draw a line there to remind me. So I've got two squares on the inside of that border at each edge. Okay I've threaded up my needle with my coordinating thread, the thread that I want to use for the border and I'm using a double thread as well. So for the entire rug I'm going to use a stitch called tent stitch and that's just basically a single stitch going from left to right and all stitches will go in the same direction. So I'm going to put my needle in just below the line I did. So the line's there, so I'm just going one hole below it so that the top of the stitch is on the line. So pull the wool through and then you just want to leave a little bit of a tail back there like that and then go into the opposite hole. Pull it through, not too tightly. And then I'm actually just going to stitch that thread in, so I'm the sort of loose tail in. So I'm going into the next hole. So do the next stitch, and that little tail has been stitched in at the back. But that'll be more easy to see once I've sort of been along a little bit further. So once I've done about six, six stitches like that, and it doesn't have to be six, but just once you've sort of stitched that in under a few of the stitches and it's nice and firm in there, you can actually trim that off. Make sure you don't cut through your thread or through your stitches. And then you've got a nice neat back edge as well. So just carry on going. Keeping the tension as even as you can. So when you get to that corner, so you've reached your line, do your final stitch and then put your needle in just below, in the hole below. Oops. and then you can start working your way downwards. If you find that your thread is becoming twisted as you're working, just let go of it and just let it dangle and straighten itself out and then your stitches won't become twisted. When you come near the end of your thread, you want to leave about an inch, that's probably a little bit more. Cut off your needle and re-thread 
and then we can stitch that bit in at the back as we did when we started. I know some people um, sort of take the thread and feed it through the back of the stitches but I find that can pull the stitches out a little bit or pull them out of shape at the front so I prefer to do it this way but whatever way you're, you're used to. And then start up again where you left off. I'm holding on to that thread at the back and again leave a bit of this thread and we're now going to sort of stitch the pair of them in, tidy them both up. So I'm going under the thread there and then tucking it back and going in above it. That's my last stitch at that corner. So again, I'll wrap that round the thread. And then you can turn your frame and carry on tucking it in if you need to. I'll just do a couple more stitches tucking it in and then I'll snip it off again. Those two threads are neatly sewn in at the corner there. And then you can carry on again. Now I'm actually going to make this into a double row border. So rather than finishing off at that corner there, final stitch there and in below the first one and then I'm going to continue around and just follow the inside edge of the line that I've done and the final stitch And then I can snip off at the back there. And then I'll join my next thread in again in that corner and I'll fill this central section first. So I've got my lighter coloured thread here and I'm joining in in that corner where I cast off so that I can stitch the thread in again. Hold that like that. So I'll leave the length of that as well. And then when I come down again, I'll push that up and tuck it in. Like that, so about five stitches there. And then again, I'm going to trim that off. stitch there. 
So once you've finished your stitching, you can turn over and again trim off your thread, leaving about an inch or so, and then remove the canvas from the frame. Now with this particular canvas you can actually just cut right around the edge as close up to the rug um, as you like but I actually prefer to leave a bit of a border. I feel that it's more secure and also you don't get these little white sort of tips of the squares sticking out of the wool. So trim around the rug. You want probably want to leave about 10mm, about a centimetre around the outside so just get to where you want to trim and then follow the line along and then trim away a square at each corner leaving probably about the thickness of one hole actually at the corner of the stitched area. So just sort of go up like that and then across like that. So you're not just you're not going right up to the corner of the rug. You're just leaving a tiny little bit of fabric there at each corner. that and then fold in each flap. You can tuck your tail of your last bit of thread inside there, and crease it down outside flaps and you may just need to trim at a bit of an angle along those longer flaps. Still not going right into the corner but just take a little bit off so that you can get that end flap in. Like that. I'm just going to trim away that bit as well that's hanging over. So you're basically tucking it all behind the rug. And don't worry if you've got a bit of a border like I have at that edge there, because we're now going to do a border of stitches all around the edge. And I'll show you how I do that. Poke your needle through You can, and you can start anywhere so that you're covering one line of stitches or below the last row of stitches like that. And again I'm using double thread. Leave a little bit of a tail again. And now we're just doing I'm not and I'm not sure of the name of the stitch, but I'm just going to say an over stitch. And then come in through that next hole. Pull it quite tightly and then go round again. So you're just doing a nice border of stitches along the edge like that. I'm actually meant to pick up that tail so I'll start doing that now and just stitch that in at the back as we did as we were going around. So through the next hole and 
And then once you've stitched that tail in, once again you can just snip that off. And continue to work your way around. So when you get to the corner, do the straight stitch to go into the hole along that edge. And then you might just want to do a couple of stitches into that hole right at the corner. And pull the stitch around so that you're actually covering that corner. I'm going to do another one there as well. And I just want to really cover that edge so there's no white showing. And then you can go into the next hole around. Again, manipulate the stitch so that it falls sort of at an angle across the corner there. And then you can straighten up and go into the first hole along this next long edge. And I'll just do a couple of straight stitches and then I'll show you how that corner looks. So that makes for a really nice neat corner. So I did three stitches in that corner hole and then just manipulated them so you've got two at an angle and one goes straight over the corner like that and then just continue working your way around again. When you get to the end of your thread, again you can just snip that off, pull your loose thread over the back, go into the next hole, and so that you're underneath that thread. And pull through leave a bit of a length on there as well and then when you go back like that go underneath the thread so that you're stitching it in I'll show you from the back there so there's the two bits of thread end and this is my stitch here and those two pieces are inside of it. Like that. And then do that again, but keeping the loose threads at the back and not at the edge of the rug. And then again, you can snip those off, pull them to the back before you snip them off. Snip like that. And then you can just tuck that in with the next couple of stitches. When you've been all the way around the edge, turn over and just thread the remaining thread through the canvas. I'm just trying to cover that corner as I do that. So if you're at a corner, make sure you're um, covering any bits of canvas that might be poking out there. Pull that nice and tight. And you can go through a few stitches I'm not going through the rug, just through this bit of canvas at the back. And pull that through. Just go through another one there. And then you can snip that off. And then shape it because it might try and sort of curl up a little bit 
And if you're doing a bigger rug, you would need to think about um, stretching it on a frame, which we'll have a look at if we do any bigger rugs for the doll's house. But for this size, you can just actually manipulate it back into a square if it has become sort of misshapen as you've been working on it. But I'm quite happy with that. It's sticking up a little bit, but that'll flatten out. And then one final thing that I like to do, take an old toothbrush, and this isn't too harsh at all, you don't want it to be too harsh, so don't use a wire brush or anything like that, but I just like to brush the stitches just to give it a more bristly look and to make it look more like a, a doormat. I'm just sort of pulling up the sort of top layer of the thread. And I'm not sure if you can even pick that up on camera, but it just makes the sort of top of the thread stand up a little bit, making it look bristly without actually pulling the actual stitches out of the canvas. And it makes it look a little bit worn and used as well. OK, let's go and put that in place. And there is the doormat in place. And I'm really pleased with how that looks. I like the thickness of it that you get from sort of folding the canvas under. I think it makes it look more real. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you'll give this doormat a go. If you decide on another design, then do let me see your photographs and you can share those over in my Facebook group, Little Bits and Pieces by You and I'll pop a link to the group below. And if you're not already a member, you can come along and join and share your photos of any of the things that you've made from the tutorials here on YouTube or from any of my books. And I hope to see you there. And for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.